Hello! Welcome back. Hi! <laughs> that was ridiculous. It's, it's high. Uh, I, hope they, I hope they can pick me up there. Yeah, I think um, they probably can. Yeah, I'm not going to ask how you are like I did last time. I'll just say, sup. We, we, we presume that you're as well as you were last week. We hope that you are. Yeah, well, my fingers crossed, yeah, yeah. with everything that's going on. Yeah. But... So, we're, yeah, we're uh, back. back again for another lockdown. <clears throat> uh, lockdown podcast. I mean, I, I probably should advertise, I suppose. I think we're still on track to do the Money in the Bank review. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll still do the podcast for that. It's So, yeah, that's to come. I think that's in two weeks. Yeah, it's not this Sunday, it's next uh, Sunday. Yeah, so we'll have this, another one of these, and then you can expect a bit of the norm. Yeah. Um, speaking but, of... But well, knows what money in the bank's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, speaking of money in the bank, that's kind of where I've themed my questions for this week. Oh, right, that makes sense, that makes sense. And, well, it's a good segue for you to get you started off the first yeah, question. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go first this time. Yeah, let's dive right in, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's get on with it. Oh yeah, before beforehand, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all that kind of stuff, all the social medias, that's where we are. You know this by now. Mm-hmm. So anyway, well, question yeah. one. Yeah. What do you think about this year's Money in the Bank gimmick? Uh, <laughs> that's <I> sigh. <laughs> kind of says it I, all. I, I, really, I really don't know. Um... Right, uh, are we? Go- I don't know if you even reference the trees that are around the ring. I mean, that's because that's, this is ridiculous, yeah, isn't it? I don't really get it. I mean, no. unless it's like it's, unless it's like what our mate said. Like Vince thought, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Put trees in. Yeah, unless they they might have some like inside joke that we don't know about. Uh, I don't know, but unless even if it's something to do with right, we got a cover because I I think it's actually on the roof of the tower. Yeah, uh, which is they, different. Like, they got to climb oh, from the bottom, that. from the ground floor up to the top. Yeah, climb the corporate uh, ladder. Well, even if the trees were, like, we'll put the trees there because of certain lighting issues or advertisement in the back or other buildings. Fine, but why trees? Block it with something else. <laughs> yes. Put like, like a, a massive wall, wall up with like posters and lights and shit. I don't. I doubt. In a million dollar company, you can go, we can't afford a wall, but we can afford trees. Fake trees at so, that. Yeah, so, but yeah, but apart from the trees, uh, I'm kind of going in, on, on one side I'm going in with the whole, right, we thought the Boneyard match and the Firefly Funhouse might be a crock of shit. Yeah. Because it just sounded like, because of the fuck up of Mania, uh, but uh, building to mania, it's like right, they're clutching at straws here, um, which they still might be doing now, or they might be going right. Let's try and ride the success of the Boneyard and Firefly Funhouse match with a different gimmick, but it's risky. I mean, the uh, the concept of Money in the Bank itself, I think, would have worked the regular way in an empty arena anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe not as exciting because of. No crowd, but yeah, I, I don't think anyone was clamoring for anything more in that match, especially fighting up a tower or a, yeah, a, a building, whatever. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm having an open mind, but it's becoming very old school WCW, and anyone who watched WCW at the end knows how shit it was. Mm. So. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I don't know how you did. I mean, I put up a tweet a while ago saying, like, how in bad taste it was given all the releases just before it. You know, let's get all the people we haven't fired and get them to literally climb to the top of my building to get a push. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just yeah. seemed a bit... You know what I mean? But, again, it has the potential to be, like, mania. Something we're just not looking forward to, but then ends up being a lot of fun because it's absolutely ridiculous. So again, I'm in the same boat yeah. as you. Is like I'm going in with an open mind, but on the fence at the same time. Yeah, I mean, on one side, it could be as pathetic as they're literally running up a flight of stairs, pushing and pulling each other back like little kids, and you're like, "Well, this is the cluster I thought it was going to be." Or you know, you could see people being thrown through windows. Yeah, just, and I, through tables do, do you know what I'm picturing? I'm picturing that old school advert. 
I'm got I'm picturing that old school advert they did when they went through uh, WWE yes. headquarters, like talking to camera, and then in the background is all going off crazy behind them. I'm picturing something like that, and that's what I want. Just absolutely. I, I don't. What I don't want is an Edge and Orton match for Mania. It was good, but it was far too long of them just running through hallways. I don't want that. I just want balls to the yeah. walls, crazy stuff, and it just makes me laugh my ass off. And I've come away entertained. That's what I want. I'd love, in a way, for them to take a page out of uh, AEW's book. About um, there was a, a segment a few months back where I think uh, the Inner Circle were having a fight with the books backstage, and they slammed someone through a door, and Orange Cassidy's just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, why not? And yeah. I thought you could do little things like that. I'm like. Why is our truth over here? I mean, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, the gimmick itself, you could have a 24 7 title match in the Money in the Bank match. Yeah. Match. You know, it, 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 it could, it, you know, it's, it opens up a few doors, but it's still risky. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going in open minded. Yeah, that's the, that's the best. Is it me? Yes, first question for me. Yeah. Um,. We spoke on the last podcast about um, people taking risks and if they should take more now that there's other options out there like AEW and stuff. Yeah. Um, but then there's, within the WWE, there's the whole that brass ring oh, situation. Vince wants someone to reach for the brass ring all the time. As far as that imaginary brass ring, who do you think on the roster is actually really attempting to reach for it. Like, not just there for the paycheck, they're actually trying to be the next big star. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. Being the next big star. <clears throat> Who's actually, what, so it's like they're literally just like drinking all the Kool-Aid they can to get to that point, maybe. Just, you, you can see the effort that they're putting in to try and go, I'm not just here to wrestle and go home. I want to go places. Like it, it, maybe it's something you you don't really notice every week, but now that I've said the question, you might go. Well, actually, let's have a look at what these guys are doing. Kevin Owens. Still Kev. It's Kev. Yeah, I mean, you see how upset he gets when it doesn't go the way he wanted to, or when he upsets Vince and pisses him off because it wasn't a good match or you can see how emotionally invested he is he just wants to mm. be that next big thing that we all know that he can be you know what I mean it just yeah. it, it, it's definitely Kevin like it, he puts so much effort in no matter what he's doing no matter what gimmick is. even when he was given that new face of America crap that they did for about a month and a half max mm. where he had his face on the Titan trial and that was it and shaved his beard off and suit and tie it was shit but he just went with it and made it work better than it would have worked if someone else did. It. Yeah. And just like, I yeah. mean, the whole thing with Seth was really, really good. Even though the match wasn't amazing with him and Jericho at Mania a few years back, he's he's bounced back and done whatever he can. You know, he's he's done what's right for business and he's done what his boss has told him what he needs to, like dropping the Universal title to Goldberg and shit like that. He's paid his dues. He's done a lot of stuff. He's had some really great pay-per-views and now I think he's got a lot more to come. And I think that he, like I say, he's grabbing that brass ring with both hands to try and be that next guy. Yeah, I mean, um, I know there's a few on the roster that they are now just like, eh, if I get a push, great. If if the, the stars align, if not, whatever. Um, all due respect to him because I, I do like him. I think Shinsuke's pretty much gone on record that he's there now for a paycheck. It's a job. Yeah, he literally yeah, said it's, it's just a holiday for him now. Yeah, well, he loves America. He, he knew he knows he was the biggest star in New Japan, but he, he's he's quite comfortable where he is. Um, off the top of my head, um, he may not be you know connecting with the fans as much as we'd like and as the company would like. But I think I see a lot of effort in Corbin. Yeah, he's trying. Rip he's hard. trying to be the biggest heel in the company, and that's fair play. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, there was a lot of controversy when he beat Kurt Angle uh, a couple of years ago, Mania. And I thought it was the right move, and then, but then he got thrown straight in the Universal Title picture. I was like, 
or near enough anyway, but that's too soon. So it's too yeah. soon. It needs to be a gradual build-up. And it's not happening as fast as we'd like, but there is some gradual build-up to if he keeps doing what he's doing, gets more over as a heel and whatnot, eventually, if they throw the championship on him, I won't be as pissed off about it as I would have been like a year or so ago. Yeah, I think like if, if they hadn't have got him to win the Money in the Bank a couple of years ago, that like he did, if he did won the Money in the Bank this time... I would not have been against it. I wasn't against it last time, but they just sh- showered him in shit, basically. But if it happened this time and yeah. he cashed in and won, I'd be like, big heel heat. And it works perfectly because he loves being a heel. He says the more uh, kids and grandmas he can get swearing and f- flipping the rod at him, the happier he is. The, yeah, the, the perfect heel champion, is, and maybe apart from the whole Jinder Mahal fiasco, is to have a champion that... They're so good at being a heel, you want them to lose it. Yeah. Oh, I hope you might have lost you. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Sorry, <laughs> we, we had a little bit of connection problems there. Um, Obviously, there's nothing we can do about that. Yes, so we've, we, uh, if, yeah. if it's a little bit choppy, we apologise. We do apologise if the reception's a little bit off. Uh, so, yeah, we've reconnected. Uh, so, yeah, finish your point, what you were saying about Corbin. Yeah. Just basically, um, uh, let me think. Uh, I've been put off my, my game here. Um, <laughs> what am I saying? Oh, but basically, um, he needs to be that heel. Ch- uh, uh, but it actually went a bit, a bit then as well. <laughs> he needs to be that heel champion that, that you like as a heel, but you still want him to lose the championship. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's a hard thing to do. The last time uh, uh, someone did that, I think, was Triple H. Um, properly, anyway. Yeah. Um, and the last time someone uh, that was chosen by the company that the fans actually went, yeah, actually, you're right, he's okay, I think was Seth. Um, because there was speculation for years of, like, when the shield breaks up, who's going to be the one to, to do it and whatnot. Seth was the one to pull the trigger. Everyone was okay with that. It was like, well, where do we go now? And Seth, he he left for that brass ring. Yeah, he, he, he So yeah, it's most of the time the fans want to choose who their next star is. Like we you discussed in the last podcast with Drew. Yeah. But every now and then, the company will look at someone and go, he's got that it factor, and the fans will levitate to him. And and sometimes we do. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, okay, your turn before we lose connection again. Yeah, well, you never know, it might happen. (laughs) Right, so question two to you is, what is your favourite ever Money in the Bank cash-in? Okay, let me, I'm trying to think of all of them, uh, because it's been quite a, it must be at least 20 now. Um, It's either going to be... All right. Well, let me, let me really, I'm really trying to think of all the winners. We, we haven't lost connection, um, guys. It's just as a bit of dead air while his brain works. Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've got my thinking cap on. Um, I think the main two, I mean, I've got to say these because they just were awesome. Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Uh, after WrestleMania 29. And uh, the first one, Edge. Because Yeah, that was, was just, that was good. Yeah. Maybe it's because it was the original. And it never been done before. Maybe, um, yeah. What Ed says is in, in, in his interviews, he had the briefcase, had it for almost a year, and they hadn't really discussed like how do we do it. Do we just go, um, do I go to Raw and say I'm cashing it in, or do I say I'm cashing it in this pay per view? He was a heel, so it was his idea to go. I should do it when the champions had the shit kicked out of them, and he did. And it was genius. Like the, I think it was an Elimination Chamber match. Yeah, yeah it was, yes. Yeah. Cena one. was beat to shit. Yeah, it was like, oh, God, Cena's won again. Hey-ho, that's the end of the pay-per-view. Vince is like, raise the cage. And now in hindsight, it's like you probably wouldn't know what's going on. But because it's Money in the Bank was original, you're like, well, what's happening here? Yeah. As soon as he announced this participant is cashing in his Money in the Bank, you're like, holy shit, this is genius. <laughs> and... 
you know, whether it was the right time for Edge to become champion or not is is debatable, but it's still a moment in itself. It was Edge's first world championship. So you definitely um, pick Edge then? Sorry? So you pick Edge for definite then? Is, is your fa- Edge your favourite one? Yeah, I think I probably would have... Don't get me wrong, the pop for Dolph, it, it's one of the loudest pops I've ever heard. But it probably would have been more special if it was his first world championship. Mm. I, I, I think he'd been world champion before, and in a, a lackluster manner, I think he was awarded the world championship. So, yeah, I think Edge, because that pretty much skyrocketed Edge to, I'm now a main event player. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I, 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 the three that kept putting into mind for me was Seth, because obviously he cashed in at yeah. Mania, and that was just a hell of a moment. Yeah. Ambrose cashing in, like on the yeah. same night, I, I I thought it was just great. But yeah, I, I, Ziggler's still number one for me. It's just, the, yeah. I knew it was coming, it was blatantly obvious this was going to happen straight after Mania, but Christ, the reaction he got, and just the cheering on he got of the fight. And it's even a little moment in the fight where you think Del Rio is going to retain and then suddenly he gets the zigzag out of nowhere. And it's just like this. It, it was everything a cash-in should be for me. And I haven't had it beaten yet. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, the problem with the... I'm not purposely leaving out the women's money in the bank here. I mean, the first one was Carmella, but a lot of people could see that coming a mile off. Yeah. So it wasn't really a surprise. And... I don't like uh, the Alexa one was a surprise. What I didn't like is Bailey did the exact same thing the following year. Both of them cashed in on the same night. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I like a little bit of you know variety. Uh, or, yeah, variety. Yeah. So, but yeah, they're, they're good choices. I think um, Brock sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. It did. Um, okay, my turn. Um, I think we've discussed in the past as well. Um, a few years ago, the quality of the product is it Vince's fault or is it the writer's fault? And some information came out that the writers are doing great work, Vince just doesn't, he's not green lighting. No, um, what as far as uh, the wrestling is, I think they're nailing it. The performance center is a great place to train, and I think uh, 95% of the wrestling we see is great. As far as story writing. Where do you think they're fucking up? Where, where do you think the improvement lies? Well, it's that's actually a really simple answer. Vince needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, and I don't mean that in a harsh way. It's like, oh, I can't wait for him to die. It's not like that. It's a case of we know for a fact that he's never going to go anywhere. He'll die in the chair. You know what I mean? He's not. He's just not going to give it up. He's never going to pop up one morning on Raw and go, I'm, I'm giving it up, guys. I'm done. I'm pushing it onto Triple H and the writers, they can carry on. He's never going to do that. He's a senile, out of touch, crazy, ridiculous old man with too much money and too little sleep. And he's just never going to give it up. So the only time this is going to change is once he's dead and gone, then the writers will probably have more room to breathe because I think people like Triple H and that will give them more room to breathe. Clearly, that's what's happening on NXT because it's not just Triple H coming up the storylines. He's got writers for NXT as well and he's letting them breathe enough and that's why it's so good. It's the best thing in WWE. So I think it'll be the same thing on the main roster. Once Vince is gone, Triple H is in charge, the writers will be able to do their job and actually see the rewards of their job rather than it being changed half an hour before the show goes live. (laughs) I don't know, okay, I agree with NXT. I think NXT, like, knock it out of the park um, most of the time as far as stories go. But I, I'll try, I'll reword it a bit then. Say, well, say for example, it wasn't Vince's fault. The the writing, the, the stories we see on TV are the best of what the writers could do. If you were there, like, manager or just a fan going in, guys, this is what you need to do for people like me to get invested have you got a different answer or would you just say, like, similar to what you said earlier, like, give the wrestlers a little bit more freedom to, like, yeah, I mean, make their own minds and go with their own character Yeah, free, freedom. Again, I think that they will ultimately get more freedom when with that anyway. Um, somehow it'll probably end up still being Vince's fault. But <laughs> um, I would say the main thing is, even now, but I said afterwards as well, once Vince is gone, it's, it's long-term booking. 
Right. Yes, thought, I agree. And, and again, that, that is mainly down to Vince's fault because he's just they're, they're probably thinking of long term booking. They're probably writing loads of long term booking. They're booking a year in advance. But Vince is looking at going, no, change it, no, change it, no, change it. He's just thinking on the moment and thinking, what am I going to do this week rather than what am I going to do next month? And because of that, they're they're failing. They're not thinking. They're just thinking of the next moment, not the next feud for the next year. That's the thing. Yeah. They're not thinking long enough. So that is the main thing. Long term booking it is the main is the main yeah. thing because you can make an amazing story with loads of little stories woven in perfectly if you plan it correctly. Look at the look at the Marvel I, Cinematic I, I, Universe. I, I, the Marvel I, I, Cinematic Universe has got uh, is a perfect case of long term booking, taking your time, building all these characters so that something like Endgame blows you away. That's what you want. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I listened to uh, I think it was the Austin Vince podcast um, a few days ago, or listened to it on and off. Um, he said something about the longevity. I can't remember what it was now. Um, you still with me? The screen's froze. I know you no, are still there. I'm right. still with you. I can still hear you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he he um, he's done something similar with your uh, channel, and I do I do agree with it. Of like kind of short burst videos. Yeah, they're um, smaller like, than they used to be. Yeah, a couple of minutes or a minute. Yeah, and he's re- he said. It's the kind of era we are in now that the attention span is slightly down. Um, people just want something short and quick, and there it is. And I agree that's the kind of era we live in, but you know, when you look at television series, you don't want, here's everything we got in the first episode. It wasn't that great. You want build-up. Yeah. Um, and it is, that's the thing, it is a television show. It's sometimes not, it's... you need to know when to execute yeah, I agree. Before it gets too boring, but yeah, yeah, that's so, basically yeah. You should have the the best of both worlds. Some short term stories, yes, like maybe from one pay per view to another. But I am all over. Like, let's see. Face it, the Rock Cena. Um, First matchup was a year long build up. Yeah, and it was perfect. It was it was built it was built built really really well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and um, the four matches Taker had with Sean and Triple H at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's long term booking. He sees that. Yeah, he sees that as a four year story, and yeah. I agree. It started with Sean. He retired Sean, and Triple H came into play to try and get. Payback for his friend, friend, and it all involved around the street. Oh, we lost you again. Hello again, guys. Sorry about another connection drop. I've got Josh <laughs> giggling his ass off here. Uh, not doing good with the connection today, so we apologise for the dead air. Um, but yeah, you pretty much finished your point, so it's kind of on to my question now, isn't it? Final one. Yeah, persevere, people. Persevere. persevere. We can do persevere. this. We can do this together. Let's hold hands. We can do this. It says it will over Tesco. We can do this together. <laughs> <laughs> right, so final let's question for you yeah, is um, who do you think is going to win the men's Money in the Bank this year? Uh, <laughs> That's just like a long pause. A long, really long yeah. pause and then you talked. Just <laughs> oh, right. There's the lag. Okay. Um... Okay, so who's who's in it? Is it uh, is Apollo Crews out now because he was injured, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. So is it Mysterio? Um, Alice, Alistair Taylor, Black. Oh God, this is out, out the loop. Player. Alistair Black's in it. Corbin's yeah. in it. I think. Uh, Ray Mysterio's in it. Um, right. Who else is in it? There's there's a few people, but. I should have thought about we this. We should have really. done our research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, yeah, I thought you'd have just do knew. A, a, a quick Google. <laughs> no, oh, it's well, it's, like I say, it's been such a weird time for everything, let alone WWE. If I'm completely uh, honest, I've not been paying attention to WWE as much as I usually do. Like I normally watch all the videos on YouTube, and lately it's just like two, maybe three, just to check and like, to see what's going on. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. 
I'm waiting for things to get back to the norm before I kind of start giving a shit again. Yeah. Um, see, he hasn't even got the matches on or uh, coming up yet. Um, yeah, sorry for this fuck up a little bit. If it's not dead air, it's bad research. Um, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. If I put in... Ah, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, I think I got it. Oh, Daniel Bryan's in it. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, he says, as I still check in here. Um, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Again, apologise. Um, right, so that's... It can only go as fast as he going. With, right, right, so that's Corbin Rey Mysterio, connection. Daniel Bryan, Alistair Black, um, uh, Corbin, that's oh, five. Otis and Dolph Ziggler. Otis and Dolph Ziggler. Right, okay, so there you go, there's your lot. So out, so out of those, which one do you think was going to win it? Uh, yeah, I want to be announced. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think it's going to be Dolph again. Um, it wouldn't make sense. No, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> this is getting a really bad connection. I think it's just a bit of lag, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so make it quick. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I, yeah, I actually I, I really think it might be Corbin again. Really? Yeah, I just think with everything we said and, and everything that's been going on... Um, yeah, again, it depends on who the next, the last participant's going to be. But I, I'd see no long term investment in throwing it back on Ziggler again. Um, Alistair Black, I'd love, but to be honest, I don't think he needs it. Um, and Ray and Brian are more towards the end of their careers now. Yeah, because Brian's going part time soon, so it makes no sense for him to win it. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, Otis, just, no. Nah. He, he, I think he, he needs to focus on the tag team division a little bit. Yeah, they need to win the, the yeah, they need to win the titles before so, they start doing yeah. the loan thing. Yeah, uh, I, I think the, uh, there's my phone going off. I think Corbin just, it add, add more fire to his character. Yeah. And it's big heel heat if he takes the yeah. title off somebody, so... Yeah, yeah. So, apologise for connection interruptions. <laughs> yeah, um, and he could do what hasn't been done in ages and uh, design the case to look royal and, you know, yeah. golden and stuff like that to match his king character. So, yeah, I, I think Corbyn... Uh, uh, the reasons more relate to what I said earlier. It needs to be a slow build. Yeah. And then when he cashes in as a heel, it needs to be at the right time. Uh, I think we're still talking, but your screen's frozen my side. Yeah, so well, I, I can, really I can really still well. hear you fine. So. Uh, we'll just do the audio then. Yeah. Um, I think it's my last question, though. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it? for me personally, I think it's probably... Sorry, gonna... hang on. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be Alistair Black. I, I, I think it's probably going to be him. Again, do a lot. Okay. Do a long, long build. You can build it up quite a lot. You can again customize the case, make it kind of like black and all that kind of stuff. That would be cool with spikes on it and stuff. Yeah, I, I think I don't think you'd do a, a cheap cash in either. I no. think you'd look someone dead in the eye and go, in, "Let's go. Let's We're do gonna it. go with yes. this right now or pay per view or whatnot." Yeah. Um, so yeah, go on. Hit me with the last question then. Last one of the podcast. Sorry about this slog, yeah, guys. <laughs> I've got you back on the video feed. So it's Wee! good to go. Uh, um, yeah, last question. Um, back in, ooh, what year was it? 2002. Uh, Stone Cold famously walked out. Um, and the reason being was um, he, it wasn't that he didn't want a job to Brock Lesnar. He didn't want, it's not like he didn't want to put him over. He just disagreed with the way it was going to be done. Uh, the, the no build up, two mega stars and stuff. And he walked and we didn't see him for eight months. Um, and then when he came back, um, Vince, 
you know, they had a chat and they laid it all out, but Vince said, I think I need to find you. And I think ended up finding him quarter of a million, something like that. Um, do you think, you know, it was a, a bad professional move, but do you think, A, Austin was in the right to, to walk out because of that situation? And B, do you think Vince was right to find him when he came back? Um, yeah, I think Stone Cold probably made the right decision to walk because you've got to realise your worth in certain areas and he knew what his worth was and he knew what Lesnar's worth was. He knew how much of a megastar he was. So it's like, well, why are we doing this without any build whatsoever? So I completely understand where he goes with that. Yeah, I can understand it probably would be a bit unprofessional to kind of walk out on your job. But again, I'll say you got to know your worth. If he, it's hard to get through to someone like Vince McMahon. And the only way you can get through to them is by action. And you can't just sit and chat to him. So he's just like, well, I'm going to walk out to stop that from happening. Um, as far as the fine is concerned, um, yeah, I suppose it's fair for Vince to fine because it's basically like showing us that, look, you can't just do this and get away with it kind of thing. You, you know, actions have consequences. Yeah. However, I wouldn't have fined him that much because that's that's just a ridiculous amount. I know they're on a lot of money, but it's just Vin, uh, Vince didn't seem to understand that Stone Cold was doing it not for himself. He was doing it for the betterment of, you know, Lesnar, for the betterment of the product and for the company. You know what I mean? It's the case of, look, if we're going to do me and Lesnar, let's build this up and do it properly. Let's have some few pay-per-views, good storytelling Long-term booking, as we've mentioned already, something that really, really hits home and gets you a lot of cash in the long run, not just a random thing on a free TV show, because it was on SmackDown, wasn't it, or some shit? Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, uh, I I agree with him walking out, and I agree with Vince finding him, but I wouldn't find him that much. I mean, it was going to be more. It, it was, you know, with all the interviews and podcasts I've heard, it was going to be more, and Austin was like... Uh, well, I think it was Austin, he threw that number out there and Vince agreed to it. Um, I agree for his reasons of why he didn't want to do the favours for Brock. Um, and he, he will say this is why they said it in, in interviews. I did think it was very unprofessional of him to walk out. He regrets it. Because at the end of the day, it, if in any job, you refuse to turn up you're, you're done, yeah, you know, for whatever reason. And it's not like it was a regular job. He, he kind of walked out the fans as well. Um, but he, what he could have done, I mean, he still would have been in a lot of trouble for it. He goes, as he could have turned up to Raw and just said, I'm not doing it. But he no-showed Raw. Or he could have just no-showed that Raw and then came back the following week and said, right, sorry, bollock me, find me whatever you do, but I'm not doing this prop thing. Let's talk about this. Um, but I think it was more than that. I think as, as far as I, the information I've got, he was burning the candle at both ends. He was spent. Um, yeah, maybe it was just the straw that broke the camel's back. But maybe that's what it was. Yeah. As far as the fine thing, regardless of the sum, um, I think Vince needed to make an example of it. Because if... Austin does that when it pretty much had an eight-month holiday. Fair enough, it was unpaid, but eight months off, he came straight back and there was no repercussions. Everyone else in the locker room was like, well, I'm going to do that when I, uh, they're going to do something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll say that. This is why I say there should not be not, no, no repercussions. There should have been a fine, but I still don't think the amount was necessary. Yeah, well, again, we don't know... It, it, it could have been reflected in Austin's paycheck because let's face it, he would have been rolling in the money yeah. uh, around that time. Um, but he compares his situation to CM Punk's a little bit of when CM Punk, well, he eventually did walk, but the first time he planned to walk back in 2011. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, I think he says it as like um, similar situation, different circumstances. I think the circumstances are very different because, um, yes, it was a creative difference, but Austin's was more for, like, that his, his personal. It was to do with his character. And, yes, it was partially to do with what's best for the business, but it was like, yeah, I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. This should be a pay per match, like you said. Yeah. Fox was more... He, he was, yes, he was frustrated with what was going on with him, but he was frustrated with the company as a whole. 
And this wasn't about money. Uh, I mean, eventually, like I say, Austin came back, he got fined, and it kind of ended in something to do with money. Punk walked, and I don't think... I mean, if Punk agreed to go back, and they had a conversation, and at the last minute, Vince said, well, you did walk out, and I think you needed a slap on the wrist, I'm going to fine you. Punk's going to go to town to fucking... Yeah, yeah well, yeah, because he doesn't care about money. Because at the end of the day, Austin kind of wanted to go back eventually. Mm. I don't think Punk does. No. Or even if he does, I don't think he wants to go back that bad. Yeah. So, it, yeah, like I say, Austin admits he was wrong. It's a hard thing to do because I respect that he had the balls to go, this is stupid, fuck you, I'm out. But... I think we said in the last podcast, you know, sometimes you have to bite the bullet and do what your boss tells you. Yeah, true. It's a, 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 but again, yeah. I suppose it's a different time, isn't it? It's these days you don't take that chance because Vince will penalise you, not necessarily even in a fine. Because a fine thing is one thing, because that's that's a private matter where it affects you personally, but it doesn't affect your character or anything else like that going forward. But what Vince yeah. does these days is that he affects the characters. He'll repackage them and make them look ridiculous. He'll job them out to certain people. He'll sit them on their sofa and not get them paid. So they don't, no TV time, no merch sales, nothing. So he'll he'll hit them where it really, really hurts these days, which is completely unfair because it ruins their character. And then when they do come back, no one gives a shit. But if you just find them, then that's not the end of the world. Yeah, I mean... I, I get what back then in 2002 what Vince was trying to do with Brock because he, he, he pretty much had a stiffy foot of Brock as soon as he walked in and throughout of all 2002 any legend that Brock had in front of him whether it be Hogan Taker The Rock he destroyed and I'm not knocking that it was a brilliant way to get Brock as for what he is today um uh, so I get what Austin was saying is like, yeah, this should be paid to be worthy. It's a bad business decision. But if Brock had uh, you know, beaten Austin, destroyed Austin, whatever, at that point in Austin's career, where would have Austin gone from there? Yeah. I, 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 I just don't see how he would have recovered with character. Uh, so again, yeah, it's a different job. You could go, oh, I, for any job, you could go, oh, I don't want to do it, but once it's done, it's done. In wrestling, you could do the job and your character could be dead. Yeah, exactly. Water, because it's like, where, where now? Yeah, it, it's, it, not, it's, not, a yeah it's not a normal job. Business. It's not a normal no. job. So It's a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've built a character. You're yeah. not just building a, a job that you get paid for. You've built a character and a persona and everything that everybody speaks to or relates to in some way. So if you allow that to be mugged off, eventually people won't care about it. It's happened a million times and it will continue to happen to this day that if they don't make us care about a character, it doesn't matter how much um, you want to push them, we won't accept them. No, it's... in it, it, Most, well not most jobs, but in some jobs, yes, you, you want to build a career around it and sometimes you do training from home sometimes you'll go to courses and whatnot but most people you know throw, throwing the the cliche one out there nine till five that's when they focus on their job and career everything after that they go home they switch it off friends family whatever in wrestling it's 24 7 mm. for years you're honing your craft you're in the gym you're learning whether it be promos or whatnot and for Someone to suggest something that could either take it all away or tarnish everything you've worked so hard to build. You are in a difficult position to go. You might be my boss, but this is this is bad. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, like I say, sometimes you have to check to yourself, your self worth. Like yeah, you, know, you need to know your self worth. Uh, Austin, Austin still says to this day, like, not many, there's not many cats like me around. And I agree, he wasn't just a jobber. He was Stone Cold Steve fucking Austin, for God's sake. Yeah. So, but, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. It's done, and, you know, unfortunately, it meant we lost out on Austin for eight months. But you, you, can't, you can't, you know, cry over spilt milk. Yeah, true. Yeah. Right. I think that's, 
wraps it up. Yeah, no we, we, we got there eventually. Um, <laughs> again, we apologise to everybody that's stuck it through to the end, all the problems, connection issues we're having. This is life, unfortunately. There's nothing we can really do about it, so we appreciate it if you stayed on to the end. Um, yeah, we'll be back we'll next be week. Bye next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, same, well, either Thursday or Wednesday, I'm guessing. Yeah, we'll just, whenever. I think I think most times we'll, we'll put it, it's near the end of the week, it'll pop up. For the listeners, it's, it's once a week. So, yeah, it'll be some point next week. Yeah. Yeah, followed swiftly by the review for Money in the Back. Yes, which will probably end up being yeah. laughable or amazing. <laughs> it's one or the other. Or both. It it's could be both. Be it's going to be interesting nonetheless. So yeah. Maybe not for our listeners, because they might not like it. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right, so, yeah, yeah like, Thank subscribe. We'll be back in a week.